Latika, it is fantastic to have you at 100womenofimpact.com. It is um, amazing and inspiring. For the last decade, I have known you. In fact, more than a decade, I have known you. Uh, when the first time I saw you at our Bizdiva's event and I got to know about I am Gurgaon and the lovely work which you guys have been doing. And also later on meeting as a friend and each and every time I've met, it's been an inspiring journey. So thank you so much for joining us on this channel. Uh, thank you very much, Sarika, for including me as part of uh, 100 women who you are interviewing. And uh, uh, I, I think I know you more as a friend than, uh, uh, than uh, you know, as a professional or and, and as part of uh, uh, our lives almost on a daily basis where Mohit is talking to you. So uh, <laughs> I hear your name all the time. Uh, and um, thank you. We'll thank edit you. this part out. <laughs> People might misunderstand. <laughs> Yeah, sure, sure. sure. <laughs> Anyways, uh, quickly, Latika, moving on to our uh, first and foremost, I must share this that I'm, I've been inspired with what I am Gurgaon has done. When I moved into Gurgaon some almost 15 years ago, um, I was depressed moving into the city uh, because I came in from a city of Calcutta and later on in Bombay, and suddenly I saw a land of just red soil and uh, hardly see any trees or greenery around, only construction happening. And it looked like, in a true sense, a gown in, in many, many ways, except for a few buildings here and there uh, of brick and mortar and glass all across. Uh, but over the last 15 years, what I saw, how Gulgaon has been transforming slowly and steadily, and with a lot of effort from your side and from your organization side, as a citizen of Gurgaon, I must say, we are truly, truly grateful to you. You have given the lungs to the city in many ways. You know, Ladika, I, I would like to ask this question. You've been an ex-banker like me. You spent so many years in Citibank. Um, you, you moved up to the VP level. And then one fine day, you decided to quit and wanted to do something for the city. And you you organize, you started this organization, I'm moving on. What prompted, what inspired you to do this? Okay. Uh, so first of all, I must get this uh, straight. I did not quit to start I am Gurgaon. It happened. Uh, I did take a sabbatical. I didn't know at that point in time. I took a sabbatical for four months and I did not know at that time what I'm going to do next. Uh, I was to go back to work and it didn't happen. I so much enjoyed uh, being at home. Uh, and then, um, you know, then I was just figuring out what I'm going to do with my life. And all of a sudden, there were uh, other people in the city who felt the same urge to do something for their own city in terms of making a difference to the city. And we had brought in our kids from, uh, you know, they were growing up here and the city was growing in a very haphazard manner, felt that there was something which we needed to do. And that prompted us to start I Am Gurgaon. Uh, there were three of us who uh, co-founded I Am Gurgaon. And uh, today, after 14 years, uh, did I know what it would be? No. Uh, did I know uh, I Am Gurgaon will become so big? Uh, no, we had no idea. We just knew that uh, we wanted to do a, do something in a very small way. Uh, but I think it's divine intervention. We were chosen to do this and uh, happy that we are making a difference to the city. Uh, started small, but uh, today I don't think uh, we are small in any way. Uh, we have been able to do many, many projects. Uh, uh, at the moment, we are we have kind of touched about eight to ten projects, uh, saved about seven hundred and fifty acres of land, uh, which has gone into a green uh, belt or a green uh, forest. Um, and uh, yes, that's how the journey started. Um, uh, one thing led to another, and I think, uh, which I must say, uh, what has helped us is the uh, is the a vision which was very clear that uh, whatever we will do, we will do it in a manner that is good for the environment. And um, and that with that clarity, with at no point in time, we allowed anybody to change our uh, vision. And uh, yeah, so that's 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 what really happened. You know, Latika, what's more amazing is the fact that you thought about the environment, the climate, and the ecosystem the biodiversity of it, way before it became a buzzword in today's day and age. And, and the best part of the I Am Gurgaon was that you took the whole citizenship to a next level where you involved the residents of Gurgaon into this whole community change. Because, I mean, you can't do it single-handedly at the I think. 
what were the learnings which you had in the corporate world which made you take some of these initiatives um, and make it more collective effort and make it more sustainable effort so you know why i think uh, citibank helped me uh, or or the or, or uh, the corporate world helped me we were allowed to three things which i learned in citibank one was to think big uh, anything citibank did was big so you learned uh, to in a big way uh, secondly is the integrity and third is to keep that attitude of wanting to do something and all these three three things have been the reason for why uh, uh, i am gurgaon is what it is i always think big i can't think small if we had to look at the biodiversity park you couldn't think of it saying that we will do a market you had to think in a big way uh, whether it is and integrity plays a very important role one of the reasons why we are surviving today is because uh, of our integrity nobody can pinpoint anything against us in terms of that we are doing it for ourselves it is for the larger interest of the city it is uh, and no personal favors are taken so these things are very very important when you are doing projects like this uh, there are a lot of challenges it is land by the end of it it is money and land and land is the most precious thing in gurgaon so precious uh, you have to fight all the time because the land is encroached it belong it it is uh, it somebody is sitting on it somebody has eyes on it uh, they don't want to let this land go away uh, and uh, at every point in time you have to fight people to take that land away from people who are encroached on to that and uh, so so yeah uh, the reason why you are able to do what you have been is because the training we got at uh, at city bank or at least i got at city bank and uh, that's that's what i am trying to do in uh, in i am gurgaon that's incredible latika because what you spoke about that think big take initiative keep your credibility and integrity intact which ultimately builds the trust um yeah. among the folks who want to help you or support you um and and what you spoke about what how land is a precious resource i mean talwaade nikal jati hai land ko leke to so so i think i i and could you share and and uh, any particular big challenge which you faced and i'm sure you faced many but if you could share some incident where you faced a very big challenge on this and how you overcame it um, it's very important for our audience to hear that that this kind of work requires sometimes not only you must must be facing not only dangers to the you know to your institution but sometimes to your own self also if you could share yeah. something oh my god i can write a book on the challenges which we have faced uh, so land is precious like i said and uh, at every point in time there are uh, people who are eyeing that piece of land and you're fighting them uh, there is somebody who is extended uh, uh, outside their home uh they have uh, because uh, not because they wanted to because it was available and you know you have taken over and now once the land comes into your control you don't want to give it up uh, give it up so at lots of times uh, we've had uh, we've had people uh, uh, reaching out to income tax authority to say that these guys are troubling us in terms of the land uh, because they have encroached uh, i've had uh, many uh, cases being put against us we have had uh, inquiries on us so all kinds of things have happened against us uh, people have fought us but the fact is uh, uh, you have to stand your ground uh, you can't get uh, threatened by uh, people uh, you can't get because you're not doing anything wrong and uh, what i have realized is that the government agencies support you in many ways they don't have the time to the, do the kind of fighting which we do on a day to day basis and if we were to wait for them to do it none of the projects will get done i i feel everybody understands you know uh, they all support you because you're doing the right thing and and you have to set those examples you have to be fair to everyone you know you can't make any exceptions and once you do that the word gets around they, they everybody gets to know that they're not going to make exceptions and uh, we have to allow them or we have to accept whatever is coming our way you know i i have actually enjoyed aravalli biodiversity park so much i think that this is one of the few lungs of our this of the city uh, where you actually get to see so many species of plants animals birds i mean it's it's just amazing especially during the winters i remember when i moved into the city at that point of time it was almost like a 
almost like a ruins, a very dry forest kind of a thing. Now it's lush and green. Share a bit about that journey. How did you think about converting Biodiversity Park? How did that whole uh, people, how did you make sure that you had the right support, right funders, and the whole ecosystem worked towards building this up? In fact, it's interesting you asked this question because that was the starting point. And uh, uh, mm -hmm. honestly, none of us knew one tree from the other, didn't know what it means to start a project like this. And uh, actually, the vision of this came from Atal Kapoor, who, of course, uh, passed on. Uh, he uh, he uh, thought of that the biodiversity park, we can do the construction and create a public space. And that's how it got started. And once uh, uh, we, we kind of uh, worked with the government agencies to design, uh, in fact, Atal and Swantil are architects uh, and uh, Swantil is also a co-founder. Uh, uh, they decided to design that whole area. And once the designing work was going on, uh, we came up with this idea of planting million trees. Uh, that dream has not gone. We have planted 300,000 already with a 100% survival rate. Uh, and uh, hopefully, uh, God willing, uh, we would do a uh, million one day, but we don't know. Uh, so that's how, uh, uh, and, and we reached out to the government agencies and said, we want to plant million trees. Of course, they all had a, uh, had a nervous breakdown. They said, what are these guys talking about? Uh, and I think this credit just goes to them that they trusted us to do what has uh, got done there. You know, who, who, uh, uh, who knew that this something like this will come up? They didn't know. They they had they they had no clue how this forest will come up. That so full completely the undermining the efforts and the right intent which you guys brought in. Uh, AT corporates do not trust you with that kind of a funding till you have also proven that That's what you are doing is the right with the right intent and the right thing. You know, that brings into my next question. You spoke about administration. You spoke about encroachments. You spoke about land being a precious thing and the challenges which faced. Usually in today's day and age. Uh, professionals like us and many others, um, we also tell our younger children, our younger people, uh, sometimes not to go into go, you know, in in politics or not to go into things which will get you in a brush with the administration or gets you into some bit of a trouble. You sought after that, to be honest, in a way. Uh, don't you ever fear your safety or your team's safety in some of these in instances? And what got you going in these moments? You know, I grew up with a father who uh, told me one thing, jo dar gaya wo mar gaya. and that's how I grew up. And, and as you can see, I, uh, there's very few people who can scare me. Uh, and, and if you're doing the right thing, you know, I feel that if your intent is right and uh, you have nothing to be scared of, there's very few people who can, uh, you know, drive you uh, away. And that's the, that's the only way I have managed. Every project has had challenges. We have had police walking into our uh, home to be hiding. Somebody has put a case on you. Uh, so half the time, I wouldn't even tell my husband because he would have a, you know, uh, now he understands. Uh, I the way, way. Has been supportive on this. Because uh, yeah. I would have said nothing doing it at home. <laughs> Absolutely. And sometimes I won't even tell him. And I, I mean, half the time I won't even tell him because I don't want to bring the whole family it's into best, this, yeah. uh, this kind of uh, crisis on what is happening. But if you've taken up something like this, I mean, I'm playing with the, uh, I mean, end of the day, it's land. And land is the most precious thing in Gurgaon. I think my last question to you before we wrap this up is, what is that? I mean, we all talk about successes, we all talk about career transitions and all, but we've also faced failures in life, all of us, in some form or the other. And these are very important things to talk about uh, for when we pass it on to the younger generation. Any particular incident or any particular failure which you felt like celebrating because you felt, oh great, I learned a big thing out here or it opened a new doors or opportunities for me, if you would like to share something on that. So uh, I don't know if I should say a failure, but I would I would say that everything which comes your way is an opportunity. Now, uh, it's like a sabbatical. I don't know uh, why did this sabbatical happen. And uh, after 18 years, I just took some time off and never went back. Uh, at that stage, I was very, uh, you know, I you wanted to pick up something which would give you money. You know, uh, end of the day, uh, 
all we working women love our paycheck and uh, whatever you say i mean i i i i mean you know your husband's taking care of you uh, you are uh, you have nothing to but complain about yeah, very, yeah in a very very comfortable situation but your own money is your own money and and i keep telling all the women who will say who will keep saying that i want to quit i said do not quit unless you know that uh, you have uh, money in your bank account or you have money to take care of yourself because that money is very important and 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 i i do want to you know kind of say this to a lot of women who reach out to me and saying oh we have had a first child and we want to quit uh, you know i want to take care of my child the child grows so don't worry about that and they grow very well okay and uh, you and me and are very one quickly, couple... very quickly to very soon you are empty nester very fast very no, soon it's not you empty nester they see their moms doing something and they get inspired by you and i remember when i decided to quit i went to school and the teacher told me what why are you quitting for your children uh, they are fine and uh, and that's a fact uh, that's a fact so please do not quit if you have everything going right for you your children don't need you they will be fine irrespective of you doing working or not working i agree uh, yeah <laughs> and we are all <laughs> uh, i think uh, i think the thing which i want to uh, uh, point out is that whatever we do all of us uh, as women uh, whatever we do we must uh, must uh, do it with uh, with clear identity of making a difference you know everybody is watching us and um, when we are working in the corporate world uh, it is it is a difference between a man and a woman whatever people would say i could not go and drink with the men i could not do it because i had to go back and take care of my child Uh, i did not have the time to do it and i couldn't make that camaraderie sitting and drinking with men after work but i covered up in my own way by working very hard for the time i was there so women are watched very closely and uh, and as uh, as women we need to set example whatever we do whichever way we way, way, way we work we have to set examples what is that one advice i would say you would give to everybody who is listening in the audience the younger students the women whoever is transitioning into the corporate from corporate sector to or wants to work in the impact sector what is that one advice what are the do's and don'ts you would suggest to the folks who want to enter the sector okay so i uh, like i said and i do uh, put this uh, emphasis on money uh, Uh, the reason i'm saying is i i hear a lot of people because i transitioned to a corporate world and i've had younger uh, kids uh, who are friends children and all that who said that we want to work in social sector look at it what you have done and things like that and i always keep saying that when i took that transition my family uh, uh, was taken care of you know and when we were working in the corporate world both of us needed to earn to be where we are today uh but when i took that decision we could sustain in one salary or we had chosen to sustain in one salary so so choose there is not enough money or you decide to say that this is a different life i'm going to lead uh so these are calls you have to say corporate world to us so, uh, at these days social sector pays a lot uh, more than what it used to in earlier days uh, really pays very good money but still it's not corporate world and you need to think differently it has different challenges it doesn't have pre- very defined roles at least not in the job i do i'm not a social sector ed- uh, expert at all or advice i can give to anybody but what i can say from what uh, the organization we have created it's it's every day is a new day uh, so there is no defined uh, you know at least in our kind of work there is no defined uh, daily plan every day is a new challenge and you have to work around uh, around it and uh, and i think uh, what i would leave behind for i mean or at least i would say uh, as someone who is age on my side um, uh, that uh, whatever you pick up whatever you uh, take up you have to do it with right attitude and integrity that's it whatever you take up and that's something very 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 important whether it's corporate world social sector sit at home do whatever it has to, you have to do it in the right manner the intent has to be right and uh, you need to uh, show the attitude to deliver in a in a in a manner 
that is except, expected out of you, whether whatever role you get. And this is amazing. I think for me, the key takeaways have been right intent, have courage, you know, get roll up your sleeves, get your hands dirty, figure it out how to get things done, even if you don't know how it's done and find right people to support you. I think these are some of, for me, which stood out in a, in a big way. But thank you so much, Latika, for always thinking big, for always having that courage, for actually giving the lungs to a city, which was very much needed. And uh, I wish a great success to I am Gurgaon. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, I, I, I know that all our viewers are fairly inspired about this. So for all the viewers who want to ultimately work in their communities, let's start local. Let's start building the communities around us and make it beautiful. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Sarika. Thank you very much.